Coming up on the Better Gardening Show, a rose is just a rose unless it's in Anna Davis's garden. We'll tour this Rosarian's garden and get some of her secrets as well. Thinking of adding a pond to your garden? We'll take you through the process and how to make a plant work in your garden. It's all ahead on the Better Gardening Show. Welcome to the Better Gardening Show. I am quite a serious gardener, which means I take gardening literature to bed. I have two ponds in my garden, and in addition to the aesthetic beauty that they bring, they also bring serenity and calmness with the sound that they provide. Ponds are in. More and more, homeowners are using water features as a means of adding visual and audible beauty to their gardens. Putting a pond in your yard is a multi-step process starting with plant preservation. This Thunderhead Pine is sitting in the future home of a school of koi and goldfish. Because it will make an appealing addition to the completed pond, the tree will be removed and temporarily replanted. Transporting the plant material is not a lot of fun. Greg McCord is the owner of Serenity Water Gardens and has been building ponds for over 12 years. I place myself as a, an artist sculptor designer first and, and not a very good businessman <laughs> next <laughs> but nevertheless the uh, um, it's, it's a magnificent joy being able to, to express yourself with uh, stone and water and and a, and a great landscape by the end of day one the hole will be dug and the pvc piping will be in place this particular pond will be about three feet deep the water level will be same level as this patio so that the customer can walk down this patio sit here and dangle their feet in the water the first order of business on day two is to install a polyethylene fabric on top of the dirt this will protect the rubber liner which goes in next so everything that we use in these are our uh, uh, swing pool materials for example up underneath this liner here we're going to have a swing pool skimmer and if this, this is the identical the skimmer that you use in swing pools You'll note that the water gets water gets sucked inside here. The homeowner can, in fact, open up and uh, they'll be able to um, pull out and clean the leaves, pine straw, and debris that all end up in the skimmer. Once the liners are in place, it's time to do some heavy lifting. The larger boulders, weighing anywhere from 15 to 2,500 pounds, are set in place with the help of a forklift. On day three, the smaller boulders are put in place. As this is done, planter pockets are created where aquatic plants will later go. All the boulders, large and small, are then mortared in. On day four, the pond pump is fully connected. The underwater lighting is set in place and the pond is filled with water. The pond then sits for 48 hours. On day seven, the fifth work day, the water is tested for safety and then drained. Aquatic plants and egg-sized rock gravel go in and then the pond is refilled. Plant life plays a key role in and around the pond. Your aquatic plants that go in the ponds, you have uh, aquatic plants that love shade as well as full sun. Uh, generally, it's just depending upon the homeowners, if they have a lot of trees and so forth, then we will carefully select the, the right uh, aquatic plants to go in the, in the pond that, you know, shade versus sun. Uh, the good news is your water lilies, they love full sun and they are uh, one of the most important plants in the pond. Um, one of the important things about your water surface area of the pond uh, is that you should have up to 70% of the top of the water covered with plant material to shade it from the sunlight because the more sun that you have, the more it heats up the water, the more it heats up the water, the more algae that you'll have. So it's important to have lots of aquatic plants and floaters as they call them, water hyacinths, uh, water lettuce and so forth to grow in the pond. Once a chlorine neutralizer has been added to the water, it's time to give the pond a family. I'm sure these guys are going to be quite happy in their new home. All right, here we go. Taking their off to their new home, huh? <laughs> if you're in the market for a pond, Greg offers this advice. It's important that when you're selecting a pond builder, and I can't stress this enough, and, and, and making sure that they really, really understand the proper placement of stone. 
There's a lot of guys out here in the market. They can dig a hole, throw a liner in, and they stack a bunch of stones around it, and they call it a pond. The important thing today is to make sure that, that the, the whatever contractor that you hire, make sure that his heart is in it and make sure that he is, he's a true artist and understands um, the placement of stone, which is my, my true obsession. It is an obsession, and it takes a lot of work and a lot of time to put those stones in exactly the way you want them properly. Uh, it is no easy task, but it, it, it is, uh, that's why you're considered a, a water sculptor rather than you're not just a pond builder. You know, anybody can build a pond. It takes time to build a, a proper water feature. Ponds come in all shapes and sizes, so do your homework before you build your own. But I'll tell you from personal experience in my own garden and those of clients, you're going to want it larger than you initially anticipate.